Okay, so next speaker uh, is Christoph Müller, and he's presented about DNS reconnaissance using DNSSEC. Yeah, That's, thank this you. This is the last presentation. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't expect the credit at this point of the presentation, uh, but yeah, like I'm gonna make it short for you. Uh, so I guess we're already pretty much over time. So uh, I'm gonna make it quick. Um, so I'm uh, part of uh, part of stu uh, stu students from the uh, Hasse Platten Institute in Potsdam, uh, and what I'm presenting right now is uh, work that we've done during a seminar. Um, and it's pretty much work in progress and very recent, so uh, don't kill me for like some considerations that we didn't make. Um, okay, so what I'm going to talk about. At first, of course, DNSSEC, why am I here standing uh, speaking about the application layer uh, when we're here at an IPv6 uh, conference? Uh, now, the reason uh, for our uh, research on that was that uh, with IPv6 and, and the uh, increased uh, use of IPv6 um, address spaces, uh, it has become more important um, to find good ways of scanning networks. Uh, I mean, there's been plenty of research there, there's been plenty of tu tools that have been implemented, uh, making use of patterns uh, uh, in um, IPv6 uh, addresses, um, but um, there has been another tool for reconnaissance that has been around for a long time now, um, and that is DNS. And DNS actually uh, is still very much uh, powerful uh, in um, modern environments with DNS servers, even with uh, particular security measures in place. So, um, one horror scenario that has been uh, described in the past uh, quite a few times um, was the one of uh, DNS um, reconnaissance using XFR, so that means uh, zone transfer requests. Um, zone transfer requests are what m some might uh, call a thing of the past, uh, but it's not exactly true um, as it turns out. Um, just a couple of years back, um, there has been an incident in Australia, I'm not going to name the company, uh, but they were one of the most uh, popular hosting companies in Australia. And they had XFR enabled on their servers, which exposed their entire network, including development, testing, uh, backup servers, and of course the production servers. Um, and all of the servers, they had a shared vulnerability, uh, which then led to a complete uh, disaster for that company and all the clients. Um, they had uh, all of the data destroyed, uh, not recoverable. Uh, they had their clients uh, going out of business and in the end, of course, themselves. So um, that's what can happen when you have uh, a weak security also on the DNS side. Um, so what if uh, people found out? Of course, you have to secure um, zone transfers. That is a no-brainer. And that has been very effective in the past. Uh, lots of uh, companies realized that, OK, I shouldn't do that, of course. Um, but in the end, um, that was uh, still just uh, one of the ways that you can exploit uh, in DNS to actually enumerate hosts. Um, so one thing that has um, been um, introduced uh, in security-wise in the past was DNSSEC, uh, which is basically a protocol which helps you to secure uh, your DNS server, for example, against spoofing. Um, the way DNSSEC does that is basically by signing every response that the server sends um, to the clients. And um, that also includes that DNSSEC has to sign responses for non-existing uh, um, host names. So if you ask a server which has DNSSEC deployed uh, for an address that is not existing, um, what DNSSEC has to do is actually sign the response. And um, now you could do that with an arbitrary response, like, OK, uh, I'm going to sign the response. I don't have that. Uh, but that would be uh, vulnerable to replay attacks, for example. Um, so what they do instead is they sign every individual gap saying, OK, there is no record, record uh, between um, A and D, if you ask for C, for example. Um, so you get basically a response with the first version of DNSSEC with uh, NSEC records um, that basically tells you exactly which records are there in the system that are near your, uh, your query. So um, it actually exposes uh, the information to you um, uh, telling you which uh, nodes are available there. So what you would get here is, for example, here a response uh, where you get an NSEC record uh, which is signed um, and you get a clear text um, um, domain name of that uh, record, which uh, is the next one that is uh, existing or the previous one. 
So um, people realize that this is, of course, a vulnerability which uh, can be exploited. So they introduce NSEC3 with the next RFC. Um, NSEC3 uh, is built to ex uh, exactly prevent that case. So NSEC3 uh, doesn't expose the uh, names anymore in clear text. It instead uh, does the whole thing with hash names. So you would get a response like this one here. Um, instead of the um, clear text name, you have some kind of hash. And you get some information, for example, about the hash algorithm used. In this case, it was uh, SHA-1 and the amount of iterations that were used to hash that value and the salt that was appended to that uh, record before hashing. Now, um, the problem with NSEC3 is that even though it looks more secure, I mean, you don't get the clear text values anymore, it's still not as secure as it would have to be to actually prevent uh, uh, host enumeration uh, using DNS. Um, the reason for that is, uh, like, this would be the answer that you get, right? Um, so there are no records with hashes between and so on and so forth. Um, but that also can be uh, collected by a potential attacker. Um, so if he just starts guessing names, um, gets responses like, responses like this, uh, he will actually be able to build a whole set of uh, hashes um, that are in the system. And he can use that uh, set of hashes to later exploit uh, and break those hashes um, offline. So if we have a large zone, um, that means uh, smaller gaps. That means uh, we have uh, a hard time gathering all the hashes. Uh, but if we have a smaller zone with uh, large gaps, so that means less guesses uh, that you have to do, uh, you can actually um, get less hashes, uh, but you're more certain that you have all the hashes in the, uh, in the system. And in the end, um, those hashes, they actually build a ring, so you will always know, okay, once I'm done, I have the complete list. Um, so we try to use that uh, um, that exploited information um, to uh, actually crack those NSEC3 hashes. Um, now, the way we did this was uh, we used both a dictionary approach and a brute forcing approach um, to uh, crack those hashes. Um, but what are actually good names for a dictionary? How should we build a dictionary? And um, is brute forcing, forcing even feasible or would we just get like too much effort and too much uh, time spending there without actually getting any information? Now, again, uh, as it has been answered uh, so often today, uh, Alex has the, the response for the first question, uh, what are we actually inserting in our into our dictionaries? Um, the top million sites of Alexa uh, help us to gather information and uh, potential uh, entries that we can put into our dictionary. Um, the way that we do this is we ask Alexa.com just for the top million records. Um, those uh, top million websites are then uh, tried for uh, zone transfer requests. And yeah, we said, okay, Okay, actually, no one should do that uh, anymore. But as it turns out, um, there is still about 5.5% of those 1 million websites who still have XFR enabled. And that gives us um, about 1.4 million um, suggestions what we, put in our, what we should put in our dictionaries. Um, so that is already a pretty good uh, basic set. And um, assuming that these uh, records that we get from, uh, from those XFR requests are in a way uh, representative for the rest of the uh, networks, uh, we can um, make some guesses about uh, how um, domain names in the third level domain would actually behave. So um, this is uh, a graph that which, dis that which displays the word length um, that is used uh, for third level domains. And as you can see, um, three characters is a very popular uh, thing because of course you have uh, things like uh, www or FTP and so on and so forth. Um, so that is a clear, uh, clear peak here. And then as you uh, have longer names, um, of course, the, uh, um, the values decrease. Because in the end, uh, you always want to still have a name that is easily to type for uh, a user. Yeah? Because uh, here, for example, the is done several times, or so only one time? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't quite. Uh, for example, here, the is counted several times in uh, the Column, or is it only once? No, that is only, only once. So okay. those are, uh, yeah. So those are unique. Um, okay. So if you uh, continue uh, that thought, um, you might want to think about: okay, how far do I have to um, brute force to actually get a certain uh, amount of uh, records in our system that I'm, or in the domain I'm attacking? So, um, for example, uh, you can say: okay, for 
a length of five characters, you would get a bit more than 30%, so it's like 33 dot something percent uh, of all the records, which is already pretty much, if you consider that you just have to uh, guess names which are of the length five, which is very easily uh, done using even the simplest hardware. So um, the uh, list that we compiled after that, uh, the dictionary um, shows, okay, which entries are um, used in, in practice, and you can see, of course, www at the top, because we scan, well, lots of websites, of course, uh, so that's very common, but also things like uh, cPanel, WebDesk, um, shop, calendar, secure, and so on and so forth. Um, so those can give us kind of impression. What star is that actually a wildcard? Uh, that's probably a wildcard, yes. So those are... Uh, what does that do for your scheme? Well, that doesn't really impact that because we didn't account for that anymore. So th that's um, that's a wild card, uh, and um, of course, like that could uh, potentially uh, bring some problems. But we haven't considered that anymore for the uh, actual hashing. Then this so. is just a list that you. The yeah, that's just that that's just a, just a list of all the records from the uh, XFR request. So that's all the responses. All right. So this wasn't the ones you were testing. So no, no, that's not, not the dictionary that is actually. <laughs> well, it, but it's down there in the list somewhere. It's not too far off. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that's basically uh, the the uh, basic information that we later use to compile the dictionary and uh, then use for. Yeah. Also, I'm wondering, like, what is M, for example? Is it mobile or? Probably, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, what are our options then for, for actually getting information from DNS? Um, as I said, as XFR requests, they're m the most simple way to do that, um, but only 5.5% of the um, websites in the top million have that, so we have to do something else. Um, NSEC is another way. If we have a, a DNSSEC uh, deployed with just NSEC, we can do a simple uh, host enumeration using the zone walking approach. Um, then we can, uh, if we have NSEC3, uh, use the dictionary tech um, or do the brute forcing in the end. So that is basically also the uh, steps that we have implemented in our uh, small, uh, small tool here. Um, so in the end it looks like this. Uh, we start off by asking for a zone transfer. If that is ex uh, successful, all right, we're done. Um, if we don't have that, we check for uh, the NSEC. If we don't have that, we just stop because uh, that was not like the scope of our research. We considered other approaches, like for example, asking Google for domain names. Or, uh, but in the end, like we didn't consider that. Um, so, in the case of NSEC, we do the zone walking, which is pretty simple. Uh, or in the case of NSEC three, uh, we have to start the zone walking as in guessing uh, hashes, basically. Um, then we start our dictionary attack once we have gathered uh, the hashes that we want to crack. Um, and as long as there are still records left, we start uh, brute forcing attempts uh, to crack those hashes. Um, now, the tool is a, a very simple implementation using Python. Um, it is was well, done very quickly, uh, so there is just no optimization. It's single threaded. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, well, spaghetti code. Um, and there is, of course, lots of potential for improvement there. Uh, but even with that kind of tool, uh, which was uh, just tested on a local machine uh, like this one here, um, we were able to uh, crack uh, hashes up to, um, or like records up to five characters uh, within less than one hour, uh, which means that we can actually gather 30% of all the records if we consider that uh, statistic before um, as um, representative um, within one hour, which is not much time. So. Um, the result will look something like this. Um, this is in our test setup uh, where we have uh, currently uh, 15 hashes which were uh, gathered and uh, now we see okay what are the uh, actual values of those hashes. Um, so once we have that uh, we can use that information later on to um, to exploit the, uh, the zone. Um, those slides I'm gonna quickly skip over them so it's just some uh, uh, mathematics about how many uh, tries you actually have to do to uh, calculate uh, all the um, hashes for a certain amount of uh, characters. So as I said, uh, for five hashes that was like 
uh, 4,000 seconds, um, so that's about one hour, so 3,600 here. Um, so if I can do that on a machine that sits on my lap uh, that is not uh, using an optimized implementation, um, I would assume that in practice with a serious hacker who can actually deploy, um, for example, a botnet uh, doing his work for him, um, you would be easily able to uh, get enough information about the zone uh, without actually, um, you know, taking much time. So within a couple of hours you might have all the information that you need to actually exploit uh, vulnerabilities on those uh, hosts that you have exposed. So again, 30% uh, of all records within one hour and uh, of course we can at any time uh, stop the execution as we always see which hashes are in the zone available, uh, which of those have we already cracked and uh, how many are still left. Um, so the uh, dictionary itself, it doesn't really matter how large it is, it's always like constant time effort and um, even with the 1.4 million records, uh, that's just a matter of, I don't know, a couple of minutes. Um, so in the end uh, we get very fast reconnaissance, uh, which is also fairly low profile as we don't have to um, continuously ask the server for existing queries. I mean, of course, we could, could do something like uh, just um, ask the server itself, okay, do you have that record, do you have that record, do you have that record, uh, but we don't want that because for once we don't want to do a, do a, a denial of service attack because we just want to get information and not kill the server, uh, then of course we want to keep low profile because we're in the reconnaissance phase um, and then in the end um, it is uh, much easier to uh, work with uh, a local implementation um, if you don't have to always uh, work with the uh, network and the I.O. slowdown that you have because of that. So um, in the end uh, we have considered some more uh, research which uh, luckily has already been done uh, by others. For example, what are actually the um, parameters for the N63 hashing? Um, Matthias Wander and Lorenz Schwittmann uh, at the University of Duisburg in Essen, they have done some research on that. Uh, um, they have analyzed uh, top-level domains for their NSEC3 parameters that are used. So as it turns out, um, either there is uh, no NSEC3 uh, or we have some very low values for the iterations, so 5, 1, 1, 5, and so on and so forth. Um, 10 sometimes, um, that's also quite a frequent value. And there's a couple of guys who use 150 iterations. They stand out pretty much, I don't know really why. Um, I would suspect that the uh, large amount of iterations would actually uh, impose some kind of um, um, congestion there because of the uh, CPU computation that is um, required for signing the zone. Uh, but I don't really know how they do it or why they do it with 150 iterations. Um, so does that affect your runtime? Yeah, of course, the iterations... Uh, Linearly? Um, well, of course, for, for each uh, record you have to uh, do another iteration if, if the it, uh, amount of iterations increased. So it's basically a factor. Um, so linear? So yeah. So um, basically... Uh, what we did our research with was uh, the five iterations because we seemed that to be one of the most uh, predominant values um, used in NSEC3 implementations. So the zone that didn't want you to do this or wanted to make it expensive for you would, would get would an arms race. Yeah. And they could, how, how high could they drive that? Uh, Assuming they had more computation power than you did. Yeah, I believe 150 could even be uh, the maximum that is currently uh, supported. Um, but I'm not oh, so entirely sure. So. Clients will fail to validate if that goes too high, for example? Um, that could happen. I'm not sure. I haven't tested that. So. Um, there are some missing. There's some missing. Sweden, for example, is not on there. Yet. Yeah, yeah. There. I, I just took like the list from uh, those guys, so I can't really uh, take credit for that or uh, okay. discuss about that. So. Um, what we did was just some um, out in the wild testing and uh, looking at some uh, parameters that were used in practice and we found five to be one of the most uh, common values. Also, of course, um, SHA-1 hashing isn't the only hashing algorithm used. Um, they could also, for example, use MD5 hashing, whoever does that. But some people we have seen that um, do one iteration with uh, MD5 hashing, okay. I don't know why even, but okay. Um, so. 
Yeah, th those are very rare with really high amount of iterations. Um, we've also looked at, for example, the uh, .gov domain. Um, the US government is very eager at um, deploying DNSSEC. They have a website which is particularly designed to monitor the DNSSEC deployment within the .gov domain. Um, so we found a kind of test bed there for checking uh, which parameters are actually used. Um, so it would be interesting to look at those. And even there, we have very different values. So we have uh, seen one iterations up to uh, 30, I believe. So um, it highly depends on, on the operators uh, of the domain. So you said that you could, uh, essentially this is a way of trading number of queries that you have to ask, right? Brute forcing the, via DNS queries yeah, uh, if you against brute forcing the hashes, right? Yeah. So what's the, what's the ref reduction factor in the number of queries that you have to ask? Because you have to ask some queries, right? Yeah, of course, you have to ask some queries. Um, how many queries you have to ask depends on the way you do the guessing uh, for, for getting the hashes. Um, but for sure, you're, you have to do much less than you would do for uh, actually guessing all the records. Because um, you will always get two responses uh, which uh, tell you what is the previous hash, what is the next hash. Um, so you can basically um, try to start guessing just very simple uh, combinations. And um, as you build um, the, um, the hash uh, list, which is, uh, as I said, like a ring, so it connects back to the uh, um, zone record itself, um, you can uh, start uh, with very few guesses and then um, decide whether you're content with the amount of hashes that you've gathered or not. Um, then you would have to refine, uh, for example, modify uh, your uh, random guesses. Um, and you trade off CPU against brute force CPU versus requests. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things that you uh, get out of the, out of the um, brute forcing is, uh, or actually, even if you would have the, um, the requests, uh, that will also mean that you were much more visible uh, to the uh, operator of that server, of course. So um, in the end, um, you're better off uh, working locally um, than you would. So much faster than Lorenzo. I checked the RFCs for the limits on the iterations. Um, it says uh, the zone owner must not use a value higher than uh, uh, specified in the table below for the given key size, so it depends on the key size. And uh, for okay. the key size of uh, 1024, the limit of iterations is 150. For 2K, it's 500, and for 4K, it's uh, 2,500. Okay. So basically, the spec allows you for a higher number of iterations if you also use a bigger key size. Okay. Because on the face of it, this basically says if you sign your domain, you make it way, way, way easier for people to sort of figure out all your. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, that's it looks trivially easy almost. Yeah, if, um, yeah, if you. No? It, it depends. Um, I mean, of course, you, you get some benefits out of the NSEC. Um, that's what yeah, people are actually aiming for. But, but, you're, but you also lose... Yeah, you, you lose the ability to protect against uh, host enumeration. Or with NSEC 3, of course, it has become uh, more difficult than with NSEC, but it's still possible, as like I'm trying to point out here. Sure, but this is not very hard, right? Well, I mean, the difference is, in, in regular DNS, we can... Well, I mean, NSEC 3, NSEC allows us to walk it. NSEC 3 gets you back the hash values. So now you've got to go through and crack them. But, but I suppose if it's, if it's a 20 character name, but no, because that's. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can start to get. So for, to brute force an 8 character an eight character host name, how long do you like to enumerate all of them? How many is that? I don't know. 26 to the 8 or something? That's a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, but, but like but an hour for five, hour for five. So uh, with a single threaded implementation on this laptop. So 26 to the fifth. And of course, like there's lots of potential for improvement there. Uh, you could basically scale unlimitedly uh, with new nodes. Uh, yeah, I mean, so for, for 20, if it were 26 characters, five, five, so if it's 26 possible characters and five, Character long, that's 11 million combinations. I mean, you've got to check that it's open. You've got to go, you've got to sit there and try to walk through and find all the problems with hashes. No, no, but if you, if you were to, like, if you have five character long strings of 26 characters, to brute force it without the NSEC, you'd need 11 million queries. You'd have to, like, enumerate all of them, essentially. Yeah. Right. It, but with, with, with the NSEC, it becomes, like, what, what did you say? 
Uh, just like um, yeah. I think it would be interesting to uh, have the DNS server and actually allow zone transfers and serve out a dummy uh, zone with a zone transfer and put some honeypots in those addresses. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm running out of time. So. Uh, is the tool available online? Uh, the tool is currently available online, uh, but it's, as I said, like a very easy work, uh, early work in progress. But yeah, That's it's uh, yeah. We're, we're, we have it on the website. Um, I can just quickly. Uh, here we go. So it's down there. Um, so working on that, uh, there might be a new version coming up the next couple of days, hopefully. Um, so yeah. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, questions? Any questions? Any questions? Right. Okay.